Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is going to be a pick a card tarot reading for star seeds. Up on your screen, you can see the three different colored lights, the three different flames. You can pick whichever one is drawing you in, whichever one has the message for you. If you would like to see the cards before you choose your reading, you will have an opportunity to do so. You can also find all the timestamps down below in the description box. Before I jump into the individual readings, I just want to say that I'm very curious to see what's going on with everyone because I have been sucked into doing this reading by the vortex of emotion that I'm feeling here. Um, as you can tell, from the way I'm speaking, um, I feel a little, honestly, a little bit overwhelmed by, by all of the emotion that you guys are apparently experiencing. So we're going to try to just, I'm going to leave these readings completely open. We just want to find out what wants to come through, sort through whatever it is that we're feeling and move on through to the other side here. So go ahead and pick your reading and I will see you soon. All right, let's begin with group number one. You guys picked the blue ball of light, right? The blue ball of light, the blue flame. Clearly <laughs> a connection here to Blu-ray energy. But let's just see what the tarot, I, I drew three, three cards, we'll get more depending on what this is. Let me just show you these. This is a very non-traditional tarot deck. I honestly read these particular cards. This is the Dreams of Gaia tarot. It is called a tarot deck, but I read it more like oracle cards. Nine of Air. Her third eye lit up and these lightning bolts, these synapses, this web of consciousness going out into the cosmos. Three of air, reading, 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 and studying. I have a skull down here and a dragon, a blue dragon looking over their shoulder and another three, three of fire, setting off on an adventure. Initial impression here is that you guys are Okay, so there's what you have been doing on the human level and there's then there's what you've been doing energetically um, So it feels like on the human level you have been thinking about you've received some kind of new idea You are thinking about something thinking about something a new idea, wanting to make a change, and feeling like this idea is kind of coming down from above, like it is, like it is inspired. <sighs> but there's this feeling of how do I make it fit into the physical world? How do I actually do this? Is it something I should even do? It could be something rather terrifying. This this could be a big expansion or a big change that you don't you're not quite convinced as of this second <laughs> if you're actually going to do it and yet you have been exploring and thinking about it and thinking about it some of you have maybe really 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 been obsessing about it maybe some of you have just been more you know kind of stewing on it in the background but there's definitely been a lot of energy you've been putting into this new idea uh, of yours 
yeah, it could be a trip you're planning, um, a move you're going to make, a career change, that type of thing. Uh, but it feels for if it is something very concrete and specific like that for you, just know that even that, like a career change or a trip, that that is just the material reflection of it. There, there's like a way deeper shift going on inside of you here. Um, what this honestly feels like is there is some part of yourself who's n they've never really seen the light of day. Some part of yourself, some aspect of your personality, some something inside of you that you've been keeping locked up inside, keeping repressed. Maybe you didn't even realize you were repressing this part of yourself. Maybe this part of yourself has just been so shut down that you didn't even know it was part of you. Maybe you even thought that, oh, that part, that, that, this thing inside of me, this energy inside of me, I see that other people have it, but I don't really have that. <laughs> now, now, now this part of you is wanting to come forward. And so you've been trying to figure out if you want to do this, if you want to do this thing, really you're trying to get your, really what's happening is you're trying to get yourself comfortable with letting this piece of yourself out. Um, and understanding that this part of you is you, <laughs> is you. It's just a, um, a way of expressing yourself, a way of thinking, a way of talking, a way of behaving. You, for some of you, for some of you, this part of yourself that you're letting out, m this part of you might behave drastically differently. You might have like very, very different behavior, very, very different interests, very different lifestyle and you're, you're not sure if you're quite comfortable letting this part of yourself out. So you've been kind of obsessing about how to do this, how to make this work. And this whole obsessive process, maybe it's not obsessive, you know, for all of you, all of you, all of you, right? But maybe some of you have just been researching or thinking or getting other people's opinions. You're actually running simulations, like energetically, spiritually, mystically speaking, you're running simulations. So... And then that's really, really good. This is really, 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 really good because how to describe, I don't know, just imagine you're trying something brand new. And if you were to try something brand new, the old fashioned way, you would have to linearize this process of making mistakes, <laughs> making mistakes, making mistakes, trying this, trying that, learning from your mistakes. Um, and, and it could be maybe this whole 10 year process of learning how to do something, learning how to do something, learning how to be this way, learning how to explore this lifestyle, learning how to run this business, learning how to do this thing. It could be this big, long process of, of learning and trial and error. But if, but you, you have actually been creating simulations for yourself in your mind, and this has been quite effective because uh, you've been thinking, okay, if this happens, what's the lesson there? How do I feel about that? How will I deal with this problem? And you've been working it out in your mind, energetically speaking, and you've saved yourself years and years and years and years and years of trial and error and hard work by essentially simulating this whole process in your mind. So you've actually jumped years ahead along into this process, even though I feel like most of you, I mean, you know, where you're at with this is going to be different for everybody, but most of you I feel haven't actually crossed the Rubicon yet. Not yet. Maybe maybe you're standing on the brink. <laughs> You've got one foot stretched across the river, right? but you haven't actually fully crossed the Rubicon yet. So you could still backtrack. You could still bail on this change. You could still change your mind. You could still back up and, you know, forget about the whole thing. Even if you were to do that, even if you were to just bail and say, no, I'm not doing this, I'm not going to cross the Rubicon, this whole process was still highly useful because you've simulated approximately 10 years of learning. Okay, you've simulated approximately 10 years of learning. So even if you bail now, know that that's okay. And that's great, actually, because you still got so much out of this process of thinking about it and thinking through it because you've been simulating this whole experience. But for those of you who do cross the Rubicon, who do take this final irrevocable step, who do do this thing, who do <laughs> unleash this part of yourself, who do make this big change, who do make this big transition, whatever the thing is for you, at the heart of it all is this unleashing of this 
part of yourself that has been essentially caged up inside of you. And this part of yourself deserves to exist, right? It deserves to see the light of day, deserves to fully come into the body and to exist in life, right? It's The trick here is to really understand that there is a part of you who is already like this. Um, and even, you, you know, how fit this into your thing, right? Like if you're thinking of starting a business or if you're thinking of doing a radical career change or going back to school or quitting your career entirely, whatever, there is a part of, and you're trying to figure out how am I going to change myself into this new version of myself? You don't, there is actually no change required. That's the thing, right? Your human self and your ego, you're like your ego, your ego thinks that you need to change yourself into this new version of yourself, but that's not really true. You just need to allow this other version of yourself to come forward because this other version of yourself is already there inside of you and he or she or they just need to come forward, just need to come out, just needs to come out. Just let yourself out, <laughs> let yourself out, right, of the cage you've put yourself in. Um, and it's not like you don't need to feel bad of having kept this part of yourself locked up inside. You don't need to feel bad about that at all. It was just you didn't have room for that many of yourselves because <laughs> you know it's it's tough down here in density to have so many different versions of yourself to to embody so many different versions of yourself all the time so you know we we have all limited ourselves to you know one or two or three or whatever kind of um, more dominant personalities or more dominant selves because that was how we managed to get through life but you're coming so you're really you're coming into a place here where there's more space available both in your external reality and inside of yourself. There's more room for more of you. There's more room for more of you. And you can literally contain more versions of yourself, more different aspects of your own personality. And you can, it, 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 for some of you, you might have a very strange feeling of feeling like you're multiple people. Um, maybe maybe a few of you for the if this is hitting like really hard right if this is hitting really hard in a real for the few of you where you feel like you're in a really big identity crisis here you might think like are you losing your mind do you have like multiple personality uh disorder or something like that um i would say try for you guys try to really understand that these different people who seem to be inside of you how are they all actually yourself Right? How are they all actually yourself? If, if you feel like there's different people inside of you and you can't like find the common ground and you don't feel like they're all you, that's the task for you guys to, to really get comfortable with all of these different versions of yourself and really to understand how they actually all are you. Right? They actually all are you on some level. And if you're really struggling with this, if you really can't find the common ground, if you really can't find the common thread, then you have to take this higher and higher and higher, however high you need to go. If even if you have to go all the way to unity consciousness, <laughs> where we are all one, right, where every single thing that can possibly exist is all one. Well, there you go, right? I don't think you'll have to take it that high, but take it as high as you need to, right? Because if you get higher and higher and higher, then everything starts unifying and unifying. And then that way you can find the, uni the unified self, right? That way you can find the unified self. And if you have to go all the way up to unity source consciousness, then do that. But um, then you can kind of stitch it together. But I think most of us can kind of feel on a visceral human level that even if this new personality that is coming forward is radically different than the one you have been operating from all your life even hopefully you can just feel for feel just feel for it feel for the how it's still you right feel for how it's still you that there's a core you a core essence that is still you even if this this other version of yourself behaves very differently, maybe even thinks very differently, wants different things, has different desires. Still you, right? Still you. Still you. And these cards here. Moon with soul, right? It's all you. This is all part of your soul and Saturn 
the Saturn return, I mean, if any of you are 27 to 30, having your Saturn return, or you could be having your second Saturn return, if you're having your third Saturn return, I'd be very surprised if there's anybody in their 80s <laughs> watching this, but you could be having a Saturn return. Um, but even just with this, with Saturn coming through, right, you're actually having lessons about soul identity, lessons about the, the identity of your soul, um, and basically expanding your understanding of what it means to be you and expanding your understanding of what it means even to be a soul. Um, the time I'm filming this Saturn is in Pisces and this is very relevant here because Pisces is everything, right? It is the ener it is the sign that contains all of the energies. It, it is like the energy of the void or the ocean, if you prefer a more earth-based metaphor, right? You know how on earth, uh, you know, the water cycle of the planet, everything ultimately returns to the sea, right? Everything, 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 even on the, the most inner, the most landlocked innermost place on a continent, eventually everything there will eventually flow and return to the ocean. So Pisces is like the ocean like that, right? Or on a cosmic level, it's like the void. So everything ultimately returns to this collective space, right? Everything eventually returns to this collective space, so for those of you who need to take this learning here, to take this to a very high level in order to understand how all of these different parts are actually you, instead of taking it to like source sun, you know, when, I, when we say source, everybody means something slightly different, I think, right? Just like when people say God or goddess, everyone means something slightly different. So I think a lot of the time in common parlance when people say source i think a lot of the time people are kind of imagining a big ball of light right maybe they're imagining a great central sun maybe they're imagining a singular light source maybe they're imagining all that is or unity consciousness on some level there is another way and all of those are great right those are all very very great <laughs> ways of understanding source there is another way that not very many people that I am aware of think about, and it's the source void, the source void, right? So I, I tend to think we have like the source sun and source void. And I mean, I could get, that's a way oversimplification. I could go way, but like, that's not what this is about. <laughs> so just to point you towards source void, right? The source void. We also come from the void, right? We also come from the void. So the source void. <sighs> Just like all of the water on the planet, you know, you can think of it evaporating from the oceans, right? This, the, the, the water cycle. So the water cycle of Earth is, is a good analogy here for you to think about the cycle of energy or even the cycle of souls in the universe. And the void is like the ocean. Okay, the void is like the ocean. I uh, lost my train of thought a little bit. Let me think here. The point of all of this is that we tend to think that our souls are singular. I mean, and, I, and now I, I can like literally feel a lot of you going, well, I never thought that. Well, so good. So the good, this means this is resonating for you, right? <laughs> um, but you, you, you might be aware of how a lot of people think of their soul as like a singular thing. Like I am this one soul and my soul is one thing and I am me and that's it. Um, I don't really see it that way. And I can feel from the way you guys are vibrating in response to what I'm saying, I can feel that at least a lot of you um, are already kind of on, on on board with this, where you, we we don't really see even our human soul as this one singular thing, thinking that somehow on some level, and we're each going to have a different way of looking at this, and that's perfect. We don't need to all agree on exactly how this works. I don't really care about <laughs> the really precise details of how this stuff works. I'm more interested always in the bigger picture, where we can find common ground to talk about it. So basically somehow some way our souls even the souls in our human bodies are a multitude right my soul i think of it this way i i see my own soul as being a multitude of smaller pieces of soul you can think about it that way of all of my different parallel selves are somehow here present inside of my soul i could think about it in terms of fractals of consciousness that my soul is actually like a conglomerate or a multitude of fractals of consciousness. However you want to look at it, some way, somehow, 
the invitation here is to appreciate and understand on a new level how you are not just one thing, you are actually a multitude. And even in your human body, even the you sitting there with your human mind and your ego and your personalities, you are more than one thing. You are a multitude. And this comes back to How do how do I how do I get how do I say this? The ocean in a drop and a drop in the ocean. Right? A drop in the ocean and the ocean in a drop. So you are on one way of looking at it, a tiny little tiny little speck in a inconceivably vast universe. At the same time, you are also the entire universe in one drop, right? You are a tiny thing in a vast universe, but the vastness of the entire universe is also inside of you. It is both. It is both at the same time, right? Both at the same time. So you guys, your sense of self is expanding all over the place. You're exploring new aspects of yourself and you are going to be <laughs> expanding into this, going on this journey, right? Here you are going off on this journey, this new journey. Whatever it is for you, it's gonna be entirely different things for every single person here, but it all has this common thread of shifting your identity not necessarily see sometimes sometimes the message is about like letting a part of yourself die and like letting go of an old identity that's not if you I, I as if i remember if i remember what i have said correctly i don't really think that was what was coming up here it's more of simply adding in more identities more personalities more versions of yourself just adding them in so that makes this kind of nice right because you're not really in this case you're not really losing anything you're not really letting anything go there's not really this loss process it's simply allowing more versions of yourself to come forward and this is going to take you on a journey some of you starting a new career some of you starting a business some of you just suddenly socializing for the first time um some of you making some big trip. Some of you completely just changing your lifestyle. Um, I mean, and shit, for some of you, this could be changing or expanding all kinds of different preferences that you have in your human body. Changing what you eat, change, um, expanding like your sexual preferences, different types of identity. Like this could be all over the map, right? It, it could be anything, anything. So... But it's all about letting this new version of yourself come forward, allowing more versions of yourself to coexist in your own body, and then figuring out how to pilot the ship that is your body, how to pilot that with now you're going to be having like more pilots. You know, you know, the expression is too many cooks in the kitchen. Sometimes you might feel like there are too many personalities in your body because they all want to play, right? They all want to sit in the driver's seat, but you're only one body, right? You're only one body. So you're going to be figuring out how to play musical driver's seat, right? How to play musical driver's seat with one personality sitting down and having their fun and then another personality sitting down and having their fun and it's going to be this back and forth type of process and that might be very interesting kind of kind of strange you might have some trouble balancing out all of the different parts of your life making sure that this part and that part and this part that you're actually tending to all of the different areas of your life that might feel strange at first but just go easy on yourself as you find your new groove find your new rhythm find your new balance because really this whole process is going to help you master all areas of your life because think about it now you have now you're a whole team right now you're a whole team and you're going to have designated experts for every area of your life so it's actually going to be easier ultimately to have it all to do all of the different things to live out all of the different areas of your life but it just there's definitely going to be an adjustment process while you get used to this so just go easy on yourself while you work through this shift because this is basically really fantastic and it's going to take you to where you want to go. <laughs> okay. Sending you guys so much love and light. I'll talk to you later. Bye.
All right, group number two. You guys picked the, it was the violet or the purple ball of light. So the violet flame indicated here, of course. You guys got a lot of earth energy and water here. Very interesting. So I happen to be filming this on the new moon in Taurus, right? The new, it's this, hap this is a timeless message, but I am filming it on the new moon in Taurus 2023 which is a very coming down to earth type of couple of days here. We are coming back down to earth, okay? We are coming back down to earth. <sighs> Let me look more closely at these cards. Wow, I rearranged those and look, my guides like freaked out. So, okay, I'll put them back. <laughs> Eight of earth. This reminds me of the green woman. This feels like a kind of, you know, priestess of the forest type of vibe. She has a staff, a priestess of the earth is what this is. This is a priestess of the earth or a priest of the earth. You know, this is a shaman or a magician of the earth, a spiritual, a spiritual being mastering the spirituality of the earth plane. The maiden. You can see how this is clearly earth energy, right? It's the same green tones. She's dancing barefoot. <laughs> the barefoot, you know, this totally reminds me. Yesterday, I saw somebody longboarding past me and they were barefoot. I was like, wow, that person has guts because if they have to run off their board, <laughs> that's really going to suck. Like barefoot, if you're going high, like fast and you have to run off your board, it, that's gonna suck. I was like, they're poor feet, right? They're poor, poor feet. But I also understood that that person was so grounded that they didn't care about the risk, right? They, they were probably aware that they were taking a bit of a risk, but they were also okay with that because they understood that their feet would heal. It couldn't possibly be that bad. Yeah, it was gonna hurt. Yeah, it might suck. Yeah, it might suck for a few days, but it's also gonna be fine. And this person was young, right? So this maiden energy, this is basically youthful energy. This is youthful energy, youthful, carefree, willing to walk through the forest barefoot for the sake of grounding, right? Uh, that's, not, that's not really what I mean. I mean, that is what I mean, but it's more than that. It's The funny thing about star seeds is that most of us spend all of this effort and thinking, we're always reminding ourselves to ground, right? And grounding is one of the things we struggle with the most. Grounding, grounding, grounding. And then we, <laughs> I know I've done this. I get to this point where I think, oh, I'm so grounded. I've never been this grounded. And that is true. And then I look around at some of the truly grounded humans and I realize I still have so much farther to go. I, I can look at someone who is truly, truly grounded and I realize that I'm just, I thought I was grounded, but really look how much more grounded I could be. <laughs> look how much more grounded I could be. Um, like I could be so grounded, you know, that I could go longboarding barefoot. Wouldn't that be great? That 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 is the result of true grounding because when you're truly truly grounded you're not even thinking about grounding anymore right when you're truly truly grounded you no longer worry about risks that are present on the earth you might take them into account you might understand the risks but you go that's okay that's okay these risks are okay because i am safe in this earth right i am safe in this earth and i know that even if I get chewed up and spit out, even if I have experienced an injury, that I am safe, right? I am safe. That's okay. And pain, it's like pain is part of the game. Mess is part of earth, <laughs> right? All of the... Yeah, so I was just looking forward to the next card here is this Ten of Pentacles. Um, would be the Ten of Pentacles. It's not really a Ten of Pentacles energy here. Again, we have this person standing in their own sovereignty, in their own energy, this Ten of Earth.
that you guys are working up to, maybe some of you are already in it, an experience of feeling more grounded than you have ever felt before. For you guys, you know, since we're star seeds here, <laughs> just be aware that there's probably deeper levels of grounding for you to experience in the future, but don't let that take away from your current achievement of feeling so grounded, right? <laughs> feeling so grounded. And really uh, allow your newfound sense of groundedness to wash away your worries, to wash away the worries. <sighs> Things like worrying about the money, right? Worrying about the bills, worrying about your health, worrying about other people's safety, worrying, 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 worrying about your career, worrying about success, worrying about what other people think, like this whole nasty snarl of worries and anxieties. Just <laughs> throw that out the window, right? Throw it into the fire throw it into the fire. That's actually this because you guys, this is all, this is interesting. You guys picked the, the violet flame, right? And the violet flame is about transmutation, transmutation. And you can, you can invoke the violet flame. You can literally just by imagining it, right? You can take all of your worries, throw them into the, like a violet furnace, throw them into the violet flame and just blaze that violet flame until it purifies and it really just recycle all of that energy. It'll purify all of that. All of those worries go out the window. Because <sighs> the, there is this like give and take process in order for you to really sink deep into this newfound groundedness, into this feeling of safety and security in your body and feeling of safety and security on this earth. Those worries will kind of keep you up in your mind. They will kind of keep your feet off the ground. They will keep you elevated from the earth, right? They will literally make you wear shoes. Your worries will make you wear shoes. Why do we wear shoes? Because we don't want our feet to get messed up, right? <laughs> because walking on the ground hurts. I know if you grow up running around barefoot all the time, then you know, you, then you don't have this problem. Um, but if you're like me and you grew up wearing shoes. My feet are very tender and sensitive. They don't like to walk on anything other than like nice soft grass, right? <laughs> so we wear shoes because we don't want our feet to get injured. We don't want our feet to get messed up. And because literally walking on the earth, it literally hurts, right? It literally hurts. Think about that. That is a very poignant metaphor, especially for star seeds. Walking on the earth literally hurts. So How many of you don't like to take your shoes off and walk in the dirt because then your feet get dirty? <laughs> so maybe it's not even about like your feet might hurt, but it, maybe it's just that your feet might get dirty. I do this too. I had to really like tr train myself to take my shoes off and walk in the grass. And the whole time I'd be thinking, ew, like what am I walking in gross? <laughs> Right? Um, especially if you ever had something happen in a when you were a kid where you stepped in something you really wish you hadn't stepped in, right? <laughs> something like that. Um, this, this is all a perfect analogy, right? A perfect analogy. Um, on some level, you, you are still holding yourself up above and apart from the earth, but you're, you're like working through that and healing from that really rapidly right now. Um, just take some of these hooks out, right? The hooks are worries. Hooks are worries. The worries are hooks that are holding you up above the ground. So take those hooks and throw them into the violet flame and let that flame blaze it all away. Let that flame blaze it all away. And meanwhile, over here, there's been this like five of water sitting here. And this is a lot of emotional, this is just emotional energy, right? Emotional energy, um, emotional energy that is typically not very pleasant. She's kind of curled in on herself here. She's kind of curled in on herself here, not feeling particularly great. <sighs> all of this, yes, but I'm, I feel like I'm missing the essence to this. I'm missing the essence. Okay, and then... <laughs> this very special Akashic Records card coming out here. I'd be very interested. Do any of you watching this, do some of you have like challenged Taurus energy? Challenged Taurus energy? That could play out any number of ways, right? You could have Saturn or Lilith or Chiron in Taurus. 
Um, or you could have like Pluto in the second house. You could have some kind of problem with a Taurus. <laughs> Anything like that. Um, that's really funny. The Empress, which I considered Taurus energy. This just came out. Gonna, no, okay. She wants to be out. Temperance. Okay, did some of you watch the first reading as well? Because that reading was all about a letting and the sun and starseed. <laughs> okay, the first reading was all about letting a part of yourself, f like, like allowing this part of yourself to come out. Like a part of yourself has been hidden and it is time to allow some part of yourself to come out, to come forward, to be really fully present in your body. And that's definitely a repeat theme here. I know a lot of you probably watched like all three of these readings. So <sighs> I wish I could show you what my guides are showing me in my mind. They're showing me, uh, uh, maybe I can try to draw this one sec. Okay, time for some really bad art. <laughs> so they're showing me like all of these dots and you know they're showing it to me all very nicely like a really nice spider web of energy out in the universe just imagine all of these things are all webbed together with light and all of these things are nice beautiful dots of light and this is all really nice and abstract and cosmic looking <laughs> you're taking all of this and you're like funneling it down and over here is the human self and you're funneling all this energy but it's actually being funneled through a portal showing me like a big ring it's a big portal so just try to imagine this in some nice cosmic way the way my guides are showing it to me <laughs> taking all of this energy and it's out there in the cosmos right you could think of this is in your akashic records even um and funneling it through and this portal is this temperance energy it's being tempered um, you need to take it all through and bringing it down to the human self and the human self I will actually even say is Leo here I really see humans as Leo energy um, it's funny I know the the Zetas see humans as Leo energy as well if they were to use our zodiac as a metaphor which they are willing to do because um, they see themselves as like an Aquarian energy and they would see us as a Leo energy because you know humans Galactically speaking, one of the greatest and most unique, most awesome, most special things about humans is our, and we will include ourselves in this because we are human too, <laughs> our power to fully unleash our essence, to fully unleash our personality, our character, our humanity, our souls, many different words I could use here pick the one that you like most our individuation our sovereignty to actually experience the God self in physical form to actually fully experience your original being your original soul your primordial self your essence your abstraction your consciousness to fully experience that in the human body in physical form that's the thing about being human that's the thing that makes humans awesome and that is why we are here <laughs> to fully 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 experience that of course we can't do that without allowing ourselves to be grounded allowing ourselves to be grounded. There's a switch in perspective here, right? Star seeds, we sit around going, I need to ground, I need to ground. I'm trying so hard to ground. I'm out there walking barefoot in the dirt, hugging rocks, eating potatoes, right? <laughs> Desperately trying to ground. What if we simply allowed gravity, <laughs> the gravity of the earth, right? We walk on the earth literally and we stay stuck to this planet because gravity.
I'm going to say something that I'm not going to explain because it would require a forever tangent, but I think it will resonate with at least some of you. Gravity and love, basically the same thing. <laughs> Take that as you will. I'm not going to try to explain that at this time. <laughs> So what if you could allow the gravity of the earth or the love of the earth to just suck you right into it, suck you right into it. Ah, and I can hear, I can like literally feel somebody freaking out. Somebody is like freaking out. I can like feel that like, a, like in my brain. So somebody, at least one person, probably multiples of you uh, listening to this have some type of challenged Taurus energy, right? Either a Taurus person or something in your birth chart or something in your soul's experience, right? Where you have some type of, something is going on with you and earth energy, you with Taurus energy. It's like trying to walk on a broken leg is the feeling. It, it, it's, you know, if you've ever broken a bone and then accidentally put weight on it, it that feeling of like instant, like searing pain, <laughs> it's like that. So some of you, are trying to walk on the earth but your feet are broken okay but your feet are broken so damn i don't even know like what can i possibly do to help with that i don't, <laughs> I don't know because that's obviously a whole thing that you're healing but the thing is you wouldn't have synchronized with this video and you wouldn't be getting this message if you weren't already healing that you're already healing that maybe it's just hard to see right now that you are healing it. Okay, so that's actually part of the problem here. When your Taurus energy or when your connection to Earth energy is challenged, it makes you want instant results right now. Um, and now my guides are reminding me of something I used to do when I was a kid. So, I, you know, when I was a kid, I, I remembered living in places that were not Earth and I used to get really, really upset when if i found like imagine imagine there was a slice in this fabric right if i found a slice in this fabric and i would look at things like that and i would rub it and i would go why isn't it healing itself <laughs> i would because i because i knew that you know the body when you get a cut when you fall down and scrape your knee your knee heals because skin knits itself back together and i could not for the life of me understand why inanimate objects like fabric and, and stuff like that wouldn't heal. And I would rub it and I would go, it's supposed to be healed. Why doesn't it heal? <laughs> I don't understand. Um, and so, you know, uh, I basically expected things to instantly self heal. And so f for you guys who have this challenged Taurus energy in some way, shape or form, um, when, when, cause Taurus energy is this thing about duration and Taurus energy more than any other energy understands perfectly that the outcome or the destination is completely unimportant. It is about the journey. You know, when you hear those spiritual sayings, when people say it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. That is Taurus wisdom. That is Taurus wisdom. Taurus is almost disappointed when they get to the end. Taurus is like, well, now, because like getting to the end is is it being over. And Taurus doesn't want anything be, to be over. Taurus wants something to go on indefinitely. Because it, 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 Taurus energy truly, like when, 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 when Taurus energy is speaking and says something like it is about the journey, not the destination, it truly, deeply, deeply, deeply understands that and feels that deeply. So if you have some kind of problem with Taurus energy, then you don't understand that at all. <laughs> you can't understand that probably because of this wound you have and you want to skip straight to the outcome. So this whole point of this is that this is affecting your own perception of your own healing. You're sitting there going, why haven't I healed yet? Like, And you're kind of saying like, if I'm not healed immediately right now, then I must be doing something wrong. Um, I don't even feel like I am healing. I don't feel like I've gotten anywhere. It's because your Taurus wound, your earth energy wound, the wound itself affects your ability to perceive your own healing journey. Does that make sense? It's like if you imagine if you were imagine you fell down and scraped your knee and then instead of just like bandaging your knee up and forgetting about it <laughs> for a week, right? You sit you sat there and stared 
at the scrapes on your knee and we're sitting there going, why isn't it healing? Well, it is healing. It's just healing so slowly you can't see it, <laughs> right? You would, I guess if you stared at your knee long enough, you would eventually see it heal. You'd have to sit there for at least a day staring at your knee, right? Who would do that? Why would anyone do that? Better just to wrap your knee up. Don't do anything. Don't do anything that makes you have to kneel on the injury and then just wait and then go, wow, look, I'm, I'm healed. <laughs> so it feels like this challenge to your Taurus energy. It, it's like one of those things. I feel like some wounds kind of compound on themselves because they make it the wound itself, like the nature of the wound makes that particular wound harder to heal than others. And that's not exactly the case here. It's more that the nature of your wound makes it hard for you to perceive that you are actually healing. Okay, so you are healing. You're already on the healing journey. Your healing is going along perfectly. You just can't see it because your perception of the time and space it takes to heal is skewed by the wound itself. So you won't really understand how your healing journey has been going on perfectly until the journey is done, until the wound is healed. So that's just like particularly unfortunate and uncomfortable for you guys. Bleh. <laughs> so, um, I got sidetracked. So basically, you guys are healing whatever wound, and it'll be different for everybody, whatever wound makes it difficult for you to literally be on earth, to be, to be truly, truly grounded. You're healing from that. You are, you are, you absolutely are coming into this place of newfound groundedness. I feel like once you just get through this pocket that you're in right now, could be a couple of days, could be a couple of weeks, could be a couple of months for some of you, but I feel for most of you, it's going to be like days to weeks. Okay. Days to weeks, big shivers of confirmation on that. You're just in this like pocket right now where these things might seem particularly unpleasant, but just <laughs> hang in there as best as you can um, and get to the other side of this because remember, you're also braiding in all of this energy and there is this tempering process happening right you're taking in all of this stuff all of this stuff from your akash all of this stuff from your higher self tempering it through this portal tempering it tempering it somehow organizing it somehow boiling it down somehow just processing it you're processing it so that i can get into your body and when all this energy gets into your body then you're going to be able to be a human, right? You're going to be able to be a human, but a particularly awesome variety of human, because this is like more of your own soul coming into your body, right? Experiencing the God self in your human body, experiencing your original self, your primordial self, your essence, your character, your soul, say it however you want, all of that coming into your body to be present and to be expressed. And of course, to be grounded and then to live this new experience of grounded human life. So that's the best I can do to sort through this one, guys. <sighs> I'm literally being shown um, water washing your feet. Lots of emotion there, lots of shivers. Your feet are being washed. There's water, clear, 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 pure water washing over your feet. If you would like to actually stick your feet in water, that would be great. If you can't get to a river, a nice clean river or the ocean, even sticking your feet in the sink or a bucket of water. Typically I would say, you know, nice warm sudsy water, but I think even just cool, 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 clear water even if it's tap water, would be really nice. Um, that could help you move energy through your root chakra. Some people see the, the chakras on the bottom of your feet. Some people see them as 
separate chakras. Some people see them as an extension of the root chakra, which is how I tend to see it. An extension of the root chakra, right? Not exactly the same as the root chakra. An extension of the root chakra. Water can help wash wash out whatever splinters are hanging out in your feet. <laughs> Hopefully just figuratively, maybe literally if any of you actually have something going on with your physical feet. But sending you guys so much love and light. I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, this is the reading for group number three. You guys picked the red and orange ball of light, the red and orange flame. Okay, before I even flip these cards over, I just want to say, if there's something that's bugging you, that's on your mind, and you feel like you don't want to do it, like you just you don't want to do it, if you've been procrastinating, or just kind of avoiding this thing, you will feel so much better once you do it. <laughs> You'll feel so much better if you just get it done. Because it, it's this weird type of thing where we can kind of get our intuition, get our inner guidance. It gets kind of confused sometimes. Um, where we can have this feeling of, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I want to avoid this. Maybe the thought of doing this thing can even fill us with anxiety or dread or just annoyance or anger. But once you actually just, all of that, all of that unpleasant feeling energy, all of that unpleasant feeling energy that we have attached to this thing can be almost like, we can, we can mistake it and say, oh, maybe I'm being guided away from this, or maybe I just really don't want to do this and I'm just going to quit, or I'm just going to toss this thing away. I mean, sometimes that is the case, but sometimes, and I think what is the case for a lot of us here right now, this thing, all of these unpleasant feelings are actually more a result of the procrastination. And it's not necessarily that you've been procrastinating, right? Maybe you just simply haven't had time. Maybe you have honestly, truly just not had time or the energy or the resources, or maybe you just, it just hasn't been the right moment, right? And so there's this kind of this like unpleasant energy kind of brewing because this thing is starting to feel kind of overdue, starting to feel kind of overdue. So definitely if you just do this thing that you're procrastinating on or just haven't been able to do, you'll feel better once you get it done. You'll feel better. And then you'll realize that a lot of the things that were bugging you we're just kind of attached to this weird kind of snarl of energy and you're just, you're just, you're going to feel better once it's done. So <laughs> message for somebody. Anyway, let's look at your cards. Heaven and earth. The hero. And the nine of water. <laughs> earth, fire and water, guys. Earth, fire and water. Look at this person here getting these, yeah, I could only say that massive downloads, right? <laughs> like literally the this like cosmic light shining down on her, massive downloads, heaven and earth. You know that you are both creator and create head, right? You are an infinite cosmic being and you are a human here on earth. You are both at once. And this hero card, this is like, you are also the protagonist, okay? You are the, you are the protagonist of your own story. You are the protagonist. You are the hero. You are on your hero's journey. It's all actually about you. <laughs> it's all actually about you. That might be an epiphany for some of you. Feeling like, wait, my life is actually all about me. <laughs> my life is actually all about me. My life is actually mine. that that feeling and knowing that that feeling is not a bad selfish thing that feeling is simply the truth of you being a soul in the universe every single soul is the center of their own reality 
Every single soul creates their own reality. Every single soul is their own protagonist. Every single soul is their own hero. So you understand, right, that of course this isn't a selfishness thing. Of course this isn't a bad thing because this, this thing is true for everyone. It's true for everyone. And anything that you can think about yourself, about how special you are and how you are the creator of your own reality and how your life is about you, that's not a selfish or bad thing at all because you know that every single other being should be thinking the same thing. And can you feel that? Can you feel how when you allow that, this is actually an experience of perfect equality. Perfect equality. I don't know. I don't even know if I need to explain that. I feel like you guys are already getting it. It's already a state of perfect equality. Knowing that every single being is a perfectly empowered emanation of source consciousness. You see that in yourself, you see that in every being that you ever encounter. So from that mindset, knowing that we are all the same, any worries you might have about being selfish and I know a lot of you worry about that because I hear about that all the time by almost everybody, almost everybody, right? It's a really common, really common struggle with anybody, you know, who might consider themselves a light worker or a way shower or just somebody who is here to help, somebody who wants to help others, anybody who is empathic, anybody walking their spiritual path. There can end up being this fear of being selfish, right? The fear of being selfish. you guys here are kind of getting beyond that, right? You're getting beyond that fear of being selfish. Because you can, it, it's not about becoming selfish, right? It's realizing that this fear of being selfish in a bad way, it doesn't even make any sense, right? It just, just doesn't even make any sense. It never made any sense. <laughs> second house so that's Taurus energy again for those of you who watched the last reading <laughs> oh funny 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 universe and Taurus second house and Taurus okay Can you guys hear my cat meowing? So we got Leo energy here too. She just came out from underneath the bed. Well, I don't want to go on the same spiel as I just did in the previous reading. So like, what is new here? What is new here? Ten of Cups, <laughs> the Lovers, and the King of Cups. Moving on from the Four of Cups. So first let's talk about this. Have you been feeling this? Have you been feeling like a sulky pants? <laughs> That's what I, the Four of Cups to me is just, this is just like sulky. Um, I mean, not necessarily sulky and angsty. Sometimes it's just bored, feeling like bleh, right? Maybe feeling a little sorry for yourself. Here we have the Ten of Cups, which is everybody's, <laughs> one of everybody's favorite card, right? <sighs> Perfect happiness and emotional satisfaction on a broad scale, right? The lovers, you in perfect harmony with you and your inner self, you and your higher self, you and someone else. The lovers can always be a romantic situation if you desire it to manifest that way. And the King of Cups, you balancing your emotions. So this reading really feels to me of 
like whenever you guys watch this, well, for some of you, you might be already here. For some of you, this might be a glimpse of things to come, but this vibration is for you when you get to the other side, right? For you when you get to the other side. And I even, I'm even thinking um, the artwork that you picked was like the red and orange. What is that? That's lower chakra stuff, right? That's red and orange. That's grounding into the earth. That is very much basic foundational earth energy. Root chakra, sacral chakra having healed that. So this, this vibe here, this belongs, this, this energy synchronizes with the people who are ready to proclaim themselves as healed. To know that I am healed. I am here. I am this. I am a human on this earth. You know, did you know, did you know that healing does not have to be a process and it does not have to be something that you do? So sometimes when I talk about this, somebody will tell me, you can't just proclaim yourself as healed. Wounds need to be, and you can't just ignore your wounds. Wounds need to be actively worked. Well, yes, that is true from one perspective, in one space, in one or many areas. That is totally true. Whoever says that makes a good point, and I agree. However, nothing is always the case. Nothing is always has to be like that. There is always an alternative. There is always a different state of consciousness where things are different. There is always a different time where things are different. There is always a different place where things are different. So, Maybe before you guys have been in this long drawn out process of healing, asking yourselves, how do I heal this? Here is my wound. I'm going to sit and I'm going to look at it and I'm going to do my shadow work and I'm going to do my healing and I'm going to figure out how to do the healing and I'm going to figure out who's going to help me heal and I'm going to get healers and I'm going to work on this and all of that. That's all a very important thing to go through and sometimes you need to do that and it's all very good. However, there is an alternative option there because you could even think <sighs> this is how I came to this understanding. Okay. It was the moon was in Pisces a little while ago and I was just getting a bunch of downloads about Pisces because I have a Pisces North node and Saturn is sitting on top of my Pisces North node right now. And so I'm getting all of this, like I'm learning a lot about Pisces. And one of the things that I was learning is that Pisces how does Pisces heal, right? How does Pisces heal? Pisces heals by simply being healed, right? By simply being healed and by healing wounds instantly. By Pisces doesn't stop the wounds, right? Some other energies uh, like Virgo, Virgo, for example, the exact opposite of Pisces, Virgo tries to prevent wounds from happening by closing itself off, by being completely encased and by hiding and by keeping danger away, right? Virgo tries to prevent it. It's like Virgo heals by preventing damage in the first place. It's like a preemptive strike. Pisces doesn't try to stop anything. Pisces just receives whatever damage comes its way, but it doesn't matter because Pisces can click into, can click into this state of being healed. It is like owning a state of consciousness where you say, I am healed end of story. I am healed. I am done with the healing process. I am done doing this healing thing. I'm going to proclaim myself as healed right now. I'm going to be healed. I am going to stand up and know that I am healed and know that even if I continue to take on damage because I'm life, right? Life brings damage. It doesn't matter because I can heal. It doesn't matter how much my soul is shredded. It doesn't matter how much damage comes at me because I am such a powerful healing. I am in such a powerful state of healing at all times that I can instantly heal from any wound and any damage to the extent that it none of it ever really happens. The wound and the healing of the wound happens instantaneously. 
so actually your guys' healing journeys that you've been on trying to get yourself healing you've kind of been that's the linearized process of healing so i would even say like another example is like capricorn energy capricorn energy heals by doing the healing by figuring out how to do it and then applying it and then doing it it's like this like linearized healing experience um, and that is really important and very useful because that's how we understand on an energetic level how this healing is actually happening. But, you know, we're becoming higher in frequency. We're becoming more multidimensional. We don't, uh, we're becoming non-linear. So we don't always need the linearized healing process. We don't always need that linearized healing process, right? You can get into this state of consciousness where you click into this Pisces style, if it helps you to think of Piscean healing and think Pisces healing, that it, Pisces is Christ consciousness, right? <laughs> Pisces is Christ consciousness. Also, if you watch the first reading, I was talking about the ocean and the void. This is all that as well. The state of Christ consciousness is the state of being healed, of being healed. And, you know, Pisces energy, this is also a lot of the wound of self-sacrifice, right? And I know I'm like using a lot of zodiac signs and stuff and you guys watching this, you don't need to have this energy in your charts. It's nothing like that. It's just the zodiac energies are really useful metaphors. They're just tools of language, right? They're, they're linguistic tools for me to use. And they'll click for some people in different ways, but don't worry about it. If the zodiac signs don't mean anything to you, that doesn't matter. So are we talking about... Christ consciousness being this this perfect state of healing this perfect state of healing so tuning into Christ consciousness tuning into your Pisces energy this is how you can heal the deepest wounds and something that keeps coming up for me lately is that the deepest hardest to heal wounds are the wounds caused by the act of self-sacrifice self-sacrifice it's like we can heal from all of these other things but how do you heal from self-sacrifice how do you heal from like a horrible self-sacrifice a self-sacrifice that was so great that you end up wishing you hadn't done it <laughs> right even if you did it for the good of all beings what if the sacrifice was so great you your soul like cannot go on because you 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 now you have this wound of self-sacrifice and you can't heal it and it's this wound that you've been trying to heal trying to heal trying to heal can't heal it can't heal it nothing seems to work because you've been linearizing the healing what if the, the this this deepest wound this deepest wound this deepest darkest blackest wound caused by self-sacrifice what if that can only be healed by Pisces healing or better better yet just straight call it Christ consciousness healing or you, you know pick other words Christ consciousness is also like the heart center right the heart center healing that comes straight from the unified cosmic heart you could also say like Buddha consciousness right Buddha consciousness any of this heart centered <sighs> unconditional state right this unconditional state tuning into that understanding that even though you have been doing your healing in a linear process it doesn't need to be that way you can click into using your non-linear ability to sh simply shift your state of consciousness in a way that doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense. Non-linear shifts, when you shift your state of consciousness, when you shift your state of consciousness into something that seems out of sequence, right? We tend to think that we need to go up in sequence. No, we don't. You can shift your state of consciousness to any other state of consciousness that you desire and you, you just do it. There's, and, there, and no, I cannot just explain to you how you do it because that's the thing. No explanation is necessary because there is no process and no process is required. So you do not need to understand the steps. You do not need to know how to do it. You cannot figure out how to do it. It is something you simply do without knowing, without understanding, without any process and without any steps because that is the nature of non-linearity. If you are still trying to figure out how to do it, to figure out what to do, to figure out what are the steps. 
that is not helping you because that is the linear way, right? That is the linear way. So it's simply allowing all of the linear processes to drop out of you. Just drop them, like drop them off at the dumpster, okay? Allow yourself to become an empty, an empty, like an emptiness. (laughs) Allow yourself to become an emptiness. Don't worry, your ego and your personality and all of that will come back. You're just temporarily allowing yourself to shift into a state of perfect emptiness. And then from the state of emptiness, you choose that now I am healed. I am healed. And now you come back to yourself and now you are brand new because now you have clicked into the version of yourself who is healed. No linear process required. I'm going to leave you guys right there, sending you so much love and light. I love you so much. Good luck. I believe in you. Bye.